We have a serious sexual assault problem in the United States. If by problem you mean that it simply exists, then yeah, sure, I, I guess. But if by problem you mean that the vast majority of people are doing it, or a significant fraction of people are doing it, then I would say no, we don't really have a problem. This kind of defines what you mean by problem. One of the reasons why? Toxic masculinity. Oh, come on. Again? Toxic masculinity is the problem? Again? There are children hungry in Africa. And I can guarantee you it's because of toxic masculinity. At least that's the answer you'll get from a feminist. Mom, I'm hungry! Blame it on toxic masculinity. Your dad's not here to get you some food to eat. <laughs> Look, the fucking aliens we defeated on the 4th of July 20 years ago are coming back! And then fucking Jeff Goldblum's like, well, you know, it's, uh, you know, the toxic masculinity, you know, is this what brought them back, you know, and they want to, you know, take over the earth, you know, because men are, are, are you know, such shitty people. The fucking sky could probably fall tomorrow, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it would still be toxic masculinity's fault. Goodness gracious. Now let's be clear, masculinity is not inherently a bad thing. On the contrary, I would say that it is absolutely a great thing. It's not bad at all. In fact, toxic masculinity, whenever it is referred to, simply is just insecure people prostrating themselves so they feel good about who they are because of a lack of identity, a lack of masculinity. Seems a real issue is the fact that men don't know how to be men, not the fact that men are being bad men. What's bad is when society tells us that being a man means things like strength and power at the expense of being allowed to really feel things. You know, one of these days, I really need to have a conversation with this society guy, because he seems to be telling people a lot of bullshit. Society is just a great big liar, ain't he? And I'm pretty sure society has to be a man, you know, there's no way society is a woman. Society has to be a man, you know, because he's the problem, you know, he causes all the problems of the world. You ever notice that? It's always society. Society, there's a society, tell the size of the, you know, they can never really narrow it down to one source. Because I can tell you this, I, I mean, I, the messages that I got from being a man, that I got from society, I would say mostly positive things, you know. I'm just saying, you know, at least the way I see being a man, having tenacity, being kind, caring, you know, have mental toughness, you know, and the wherewithal to withstand hardship. I mean, those are good things. I don't really see how those are bad. I mean, I got them all from society. I don't know, maybe society is just really nice to me. But then again, I've never chatted with society before, so I don't know. Hmm. Imagine your favorite male protagonist. Is he cold and aloof? Hardened? Brooding? Does he scowl? Um... No. Make dark jokes in the face of danger? Yeah, he, he actually does do that. Quite a bit. Pretty sure he's usually doing it to throw the bad guy off so they don't know what he's up to. But he does do that, yeah, that's true. Well, this is our cultural ideal of manhood. Oh, that's interesting, you know, because I was sitting here thinking about Spider-Man. But you didn't show him in your video. Why is that? I think Spider-Man's a great example of, of manhood and masculinity. You know, I mean, he understands that with great power, there must also come great responsibility. You know, putting other people before himself, you know, using the gift that he was given, you know, with his, you know, all his spider powers and whatnot, to help people, using all his intelligence to, to do good things for the people around him, instead of using it for personal gain. And he's great, he's a great man, I love Spider-Man, my favorite superhero of all time, really. To be completely honest, that's where I got a lot of my ideas of manhood from. I'm not sure why you picked uh, an alcoholic and a depressed man that dresses like a bat after his parents were killed 20 odd years ago well 40 depending on which generation you're eating I'm just saying I'm not saying Batman is a bad superhero not at all he's a great superhero I'm just saying that I, I didn't pick up any cues of masculinity from him it gets worse when anything that society deems feminine like having feelings gets pegged as a threat to manhood mmm I don't know man Seems having feelings and being emotional is a threat to not getting some pussy. And it's worth why a lot of guys aren't super emotional to women. And I'm, I'm, I, mean, I know long-time subscribers are probably sick of hearing me say that, but I'm not wrong. So, seriously, man, like, I tell you what, man, you, you're never going to get a woman to not be your friend, you know, being emotional. She's not going to have sex with you. I mean, you may find one woman, but I tell you, she's one in probably a thousand 
that's like, yeah, I like it when guys are really sweet and emotional. Because a lot of women don't like that shit. And they'll tell you that they do, but who are they going to bed with at night? Not you, nigga. <laughs> so... The worst thing a manly man can do is act like a woman. Once again, in relation to having sex, yeah. 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 Because women, believe it or not, are really super big fans of having sex with men who act like women. Henceforth, why men try to not act like women around women. Well, unless they're gay. But even then, that's still confusing as all hell, all things considered. Yeah. Side note, this is also why toxic masculinity is super homophobic. DeAndre Levy of the Detroit Lions wrote recently, quote, It's truly astounding how many awful things that occur in this world because men are afraid of appearing weak. Yeah, you know what might be helpful? If they had a bunch of people who are there to teach them how to be strong and how to gain the wherewithal to resist temptation and resist the negative things that are going to occur in the world. Now, if only, if only... There was a person in their life who would instill those values into them. If only, you know what I mean? If only there wasn't a surprising lack of people like that in their lives. You know? I wonder, what, what am I referring to? You know, just, just guess. What am, I, what am I talking about? Surprising lack of what in men's lives? Just, just figure it out. Figure it out. Continue. Levy notes that in locker rooms, power is measured in sexual conquest. Well, once again, to insecure people, yes. And to people like me, I really can't say that, well, one, that you've done anything worthwhile, considering the fact that, one, women want to have sex, and, and two, it's pretty easy to have sex with women nowadays. Getting a relationship with women, that, that's difficult. If you can have a string of relationships with women, then I could give you some problems. But as far as just having sex with them goes, I mean, it's not hard. Again, considering they want to have sex. So I really, I mean, and even then, here's, I mean, the, the, the real reason why I can't give anyone any type of adulation for that is because if men are supposed to have sex, then they're not doing anything special. If they're not doing anything special from having a bunch of sex with different women, what am I celebrating? Human beings are supposed to breathe. I'm not going around giving people medals for breathing. I'm just saying, you know, I don't consider that to be the hallmark of being a man. I consider it the hallmark of being an insecure jackass, but certainly not a man. I mean, you have to base your entire amount of self-worth on the amount of women that like you, or the amount of women you can trick into having sex with you. I find it very hard to respect that, considering you haven't done something that's one hard, and two, your entire bit of self-worth is based on the opinion of women. And I can't respect that considering the type of men a lot of women want to date. Dehumanizing women in the process. We're so caught up in these toxic ideas that a woman granting her affirmative consent to sex, well, that too often becomes secondary to our needs. Yeah, sure, I, I'm not even 100% sure I'm supposed to respond to that. You know what I mean? See, if I have sex with a woman, you know, I'm, I would kind of, my primary objective is to make sure that, you know, she enjoyed it. And I imagine her primary objective would make sure I enjoyed it. Did you imagine that two people having sex with each other that want you to enjoy it, you know. I don't know, that sounds, sounds like a plan to me, it sounds great. So I don't really understand why anybody would want to have sex with someone that, that they don't even like. Maybe women should stop doing that. Maybe they should stop having sex with people that don't like them. It's just, it's just a thought, shit. Let's put that in the context of American colleges and universities, where sexual assault has become an epidemic. Reported sex crimes increased 126% from 2001 to 2013. College is a petri dish for bad ideas about sexual behavior, a place that often magnifies toxic conceptions of masculinity. Yeah, only if you're like, weak-minded and lack the capacity for individual thought, perhaps you would feel that way. Which is why it's pretty important that young men have like fathers to teach them stuff like that. No. No, you can't have fathers in the home. Okay, sorry I brought it up. Sorry I suggested that. Too many men learn in college to view women as things to be aggressively obtained, to be conquered, to be used for our enjoyment and pleasure. You know, see, that's something that I've always found to be particularly interesting. I tell you what, I had the most success with women, or I have the most success with women that I don't really like or care about. And I have ever had good success with women that I do. Basically what I'm implying is that is entirely the fault of women, not men. 
Could you imagine if women only interacted with people that actually like them? Then men would be forced to uh, do what? Like them. I mean, that's entirely all in the hands of women. If women you know, just had a woman meeting and just had a conversation, it was like, ladies, look. Look, we, we got to stop fucking guys that, that don't like us, you know? You know, when the guy's all drunk, you know, and fucking looking all over everywhere. The guy's not focused on making me come. We got to stop, ladies. We got to come together and change shit. Women used to do that. They did. They used to have cohesion with each other. Like, don't be a dirty whore. And if that bitch is a dirty whore, you tell that bitch to go off to yonder. So this situation doesn't happen. So I'm going to blame that entirely on women. If that makes me sexist, then I shall be sexist. Cool, mind me, Kevin Logan, I said it. I completely blame that perception on women. If they just made different decisions than the men they wanted, you would have different men. That's just part of what we know is rape culture. All the ideas and beliefs that make people think sexual violence is acceptable. Yeah, except you'd be hard pressed to find very many people that think sexual assault is acceptable. Rape culture includes the misogynist images we're fed in popular culture, where male violence is depicted as sexually alluring and something that enhances the protagonist's manhood. Can we please get some context to that? I mean, what about when Spider-Man fought Doc Ock to save Mary Jane? I mean, you know, just context would be pretty important. What do you mean? And sexually alluring. It just kind of sounds like you're throwing words out. and just trying to hope that something sticks. It's not sticking, man. I, I know I need some of that clarification. Toxic masculinity, when you think about it, is very selfish. A lot of that is about entitlement. We're entitled to a voice, entitled to a job, entitled to sex. All these things we're told we deserve because we're guys. Now, you see, that's something that, that just has never really resonated with me. You know, I mean, once again, referring to my luck in trying to date the opposite sex, right? Each and every time I tried to date a woman, I had to put in massive amounts of effort. And hardly, if ever, did it pay. In fact, in fact, the only time it ever paid off was when I didn't put in a great degree of effort. Which is interesting. I mean, why is that? Why, why is it all so topsy-turvy, right? I don't know. But seriously, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Shit, to get half the stuff that I want, I have to work incredibly hard for it. Even with this damn YouTube channel. My channel grows, my channel grows slower than goddamn molasses. You know how long it took me to get 20,000 subscribers? Two fucking years. You know how long it took bearing? Like a week. I'm just saying, I mean, it seems like the natural struggle of a man's life is to work. Continuously. You know, that whole, you know, from thorns and thistles, you shall get. I mean, you know, I've just mentioned it in a couple videos before. Some of us don't react well when we're challenged. Women disagreeing with us or telling us no, for example. Hmm, I'm not really 100% sure I can co-sign off on that one. I've been told plenty of times, been told no by many women many a times. No, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just the one true man of the universe. The one true guy who's able to take no for an answer and keep it moving. Because I know damn straight I'm not going to jail on some shit like that. I mean, seriously, I, I have some shit. I don't even understand some shit like that, bro. Like, like, if a woman was like, nah, I'm not having sex, all right, get the fuck out of my house. There you go. <laughs> Problem solved, right? I mean, if, if I only wanted to just have sex with a woman, right? I mean, she had no other value than that. And considering the fact that there are millions of other women, of which are hardly any different, or if they have a vagina that's hardly any different, I really don't understand the mindset of these men to think that they gotta force women to have sex with them, when there are millions of others that they can just move on to. Basically, that's just a real roundabout way of me saying that's more bullshit. And so, yeah, continue. In those moments, we react how we've learned to. With aggression, with harassment, with violence. We that's strange. I react like a normal person, I guess, and just be like, all right, take my invisible hat. I go this way, you go that way. There you go. There ain't problem at all. Seriously, I've been told no a lot by women, and I don't really get too upset about it. They get sad, but not really angry. And it's not because I wanted to have sex with them either. It's because I wanted a relationship. Again, I don't know. Maybe I'm the one true man that doesn't adhere to toxic masculinity, or maybe now just maybe you're on some other shit. You've got to unlearn that stuff. Basically, toxic masculinity has screwed us guys up. Anger, violence, and entitlement are not admirable qualities. And coming to grips with that is the first step in understanding that ending sexual assault is our problem to solve too. So how do we solve this? How do we detox? Hold friends accountable and intervene when you see harassment or assault. Oh, you mean like, just be a gentleman. 
You know, men used to do that all the time. Like, all the time. Back in, like, the 50s and in the 60s. Probably stopped somewhere around the 70s. Probably around a very interesting second wave of a movement I have spoken upon numerous times about on my channel. I mean, seriously, you know, like, throughout history, men have been standing up for even, even that, you know, it's basically, it's like, it's like saying, it's like saying, hey, hey, fish, you just got caught by a hook. You know what the solution is? Just keep swimming. Just keep doing what you were doing since the dawning of millennia. Don't be the guy who wishes he'd said something to stop his friend. Listen to survivors and believe them when they speak up. What if they're a lot? Okay. If you don't, it has a chilling effect for others who have experienced sexual assault. You know what else you think would probably have a bone chilling effect for other survivors of assault? Telling them that the police doesn't care and that the culture is full of people and that accept and normalize rape and that no one is going to listen to them when they say that they were raped. I don't know. You, I think that, more than any other factor, would probably make survivors of rape scared to say something about it. But that's none of my business. They see other survivors being shut down or dismissed and think it would be easier to stay quiet. Read and understand legislation that's addressing the problem, including a bill called the Campus Safety and Accountability Act which would create incentives for schools to better protect students from sexual assault. You know what else would better protect students from sexual assault? I tell you, here's a couple of things. One, you find a person, guess what, shocker, kind of likes you a little bit. That's step number one. Step number two, you build a relationship with that person over the course of time so you grow to learn and trust this individual. And then step three, you only have sex with that person. <laughs> wow, yeah, who would have thought? If you have sex with people that like you and have sex with people that you like, you might have a higher and better chance of avoiding getting raped by a drunk stranger you know nothing about. Or getting raped by some guy in your class. I'm just saying, maybe people should focus on actually being closer and tighter and caring about one another. But I've noticed you haven't said that. Not once did you bring up the, the, the incredible idea of just having sex with people who treat you well. If you support bills like this, let your senator or representative know. If not, be constructive and suggest ways to improve them. You know, I was sitting here and just thinking about that for a second, right? I mean, even if you, like, legislate rape to oblivion, say, I mean, like, even brushing up against someone on the side of the street is now rape. Let's say we get to that extreme, right? Excuse me, you can't even touch a woman without her so-called consent. It really wouldn't make much of a John Brown Gollingy fudge of a difference if the woman herself doesn't perceive it as rape. In fact, when you think about it, m much of a lot of rape nowadays is all just hinges on perception. Don't you think that's, you think that's a little dangerous? No? Okay. And most of all, learn about and practice affirmative consent, which means all parties in sexual activity communicating an explicit yes. And when one person's mental state is impaired because they're drunk or high, there is no consent. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Maybe that might be a really helpful thing to do with a person that... That... Oh, oh, oh wow, kind of likes you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? You have sex with people that like you, right? You probably wouldn't need that whole affirmative consent thing. Because a person that likes you is going to rape you. Yeah. Just thought. Well, that's the end of his video, and subsequently, the end of mine. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, man, go ahead and click that like button. Shoot, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below, and as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.